of the real deal when it comes to Irish stew? Well, it's time to find out from innkeeper and chef Monica Sudikoff, who joins us here today in all of her Irish garb, even though she's not Irish. But I pretend. You pretend? I have red hair, so people think I'm Irish. It works. You look so cute in that little hat. I love okay, it. Okay, so I'm going to put it's these on. It's a new fashion. On. Okay, I'm all set now. All right. Okay, now Irish stew. How is yes. this different from the way maybe we've had it before? Uh, first thing is the potatoes are in the stew as opposed to a side dish. Okay. So but potatoes are obviously a very port important part of mm -hmm. Irish culture. Isn't that um, gorgeous? Look at that. And it's delish. Is that sour cream you put on the top? A little sour cream. Okay. Maybe not traditional, but a little dollop of daisy will do you, right? That's right. Yeah, I think so. All righty. So I'm starting off with just some stew meat that I browned off here. Mm -hmm. And to that, we're going to... It's crank beef. up the heat. Beef, beef, beef stew meat. You can use any kind that you can get. Mm -hmm. I actually like fillet tips. Okay. Um, they sort of really get nice and tender. Right. Uh, lots of onions in there. Lots of onion. Absolutely. Now, if you're going to make this yourself, you were telling me before we came on that a crock pot works for this crock well. Crock pot's awesome. So if on uh, St. Patty's Day you want to make this and you don't have to come home early to make it because it takes mm -hmm. about two hours to stew, oh. um, stick it in a crock pot before you go to work and then you'll have Irish stew when you get home. Good. Awesome. Well, look it up online. We, we do have a Monica's recipe posted now uh, for this authentic Irish stew. So big chunks of onion, red onion. Big chunks of red onion. I've got some garlic in there, of course. Garlic mm -hmm. is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I've got some little baby red potatoes. Little red some potatoes. of them were really big, so I went ahead and cut them in half. So we'll put those in there. Mm -hmm. And then I've got some little this. baby carrots. If you want to actually cut up some carrots, you can do that. But these are just as easy. And I think for the busy mom coming home to do this, that's going to be mm -hmm. a better choice for them. Oh, the flavor is fantastic. What little makes it Irish, really, though? I would say the Irish don't use a lot of spice in general. It's usually more just plain salt and pepper, hearty, something that's going to fill them up and that's not expensive. All right, good. So work, working class food, let's put it that way. Um, I maybe cheated a little and added a little spice in there because you know I can't you do anything You can't simple. resist, I, I know. I can't help myself. It's, a, it's an addiction. Pearl onions, if you can buy these already frozen and already peeled for you, life is so much easier, and they do have them usually in the frozen section. Mm -hmm. I went ahead and just used fresh. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of flour just to thicken it, mm -hmm. and that's going to just help give it that nice kind of stewy texture there. That mm -hmm. was a lot there. And then we got to season it. Pinch of salt and pepper. There's our basics, a little kosher salt, fresh cracked pepper, and then the two cheats that I did are my bay leaves, just for a little extra hint of flavor, and make sure you count how many go in, because if you eat those things, it's like dental floss. Oh, yeah, but, but leave them in there oh, until, absolutely. until it's time to eat. Exactly. Okay. And then I used a little Italian seasoning just because I Italian can't Italian seasoning? I know, how minute. Irish. You can leave it out, but it gives it extra kick of flair. Right. Got to have flavor. I knew you'd say that. You knew that I'd say that. All and, right. And what else do you do you think that is, is different from the way most Irish stews turn out? Um, I would say probably just the fact that I garnish it, and you want to make something, you know, nice out of it. I don't yeah. per personally, I don't, I'm not fond of Irish soda bread. It's a little too dense for me. What so kind I of make, bread did you make? These are just sweet rolls, nice. and they pair really, really well with the sauce because they sop up all that juice, and it's mm -hmm. awesome. It's delicious. This is so. a perfect little sauce. It's not very heavy. Right. And I'm not big on the, like, where you can stick a spoon and it stands straight up. You don't like that because it's too pasty. Probably. Exactly. Yeah. That That's overkill on the flour. Okay. And, and normally speaking, they do that in a restaurant so that it stabilizes things. You used a beef broth. And beef and broth. You would use all the same ingredients for the crock pot version? Absolutely. Okay. Just put them all in. You want to brown Good. the meat off first and then put everything into the crock pot, stick okay. it on low, and let it simmer away all day. It's awesome. And it'll way. taste so good. And, you know, it's still and cold. And it makes the house smell good. And so we're, we, this is hearty, what yes. we still need, right? Exactly. All so. right. Now, I'm looking forward to after we're going to check the weather and then we'll take a break. When we come back, then you're going to show us how to make real Irish Real coffee. Irish coffee. Okay. So oh, we're going to stick around for that. But right now, this is so silly looking. Let's check the weather. Greg Dutra is in today. Hi, Greg. If I had known that you guys were going to have Irish coffee, I probably would have brought a thermos. So it's well, probably a good thing. We Monica couldn't find the Irish whiskey, so she brought uh, the I beam. saw the Jim Beam. I saw yeah. that. You I have saw some at that. home. I can run home and get some if you need me to. Do you I really can... have Irish whiskey at home? I have Jameson, yeah. Absolutely. Of course right. I do. How course close course do. do you live? Well stocked. Do you live close to the station? Uh, about seven minutes, so probably a little bit too far. What's your address? Oh, I'm not going to give that <laughs> out. You want to come over, Paula? You can bring some food over if you want to. I just thought our viewers would enjoy that. <laughs> All right, here's what we got going on for the weather. We'll get right into this. Uh, probably a good night, actually, for the Irish coffee. It's going to get a little on the cold side. A little nip out there as our clouds clear off off to the east. We're going to see temperatures drop down into the 20s. Possibly they could have gone down into these teens tonight if we actually kept under the influence of a northerly wind, but thankfully that 
wind direction changes. Temperature change over the last 24 hours is for the warmer, though. That sunshine helping us out during the afternoon. Three degrees warmer in Clinton, four degrees warmer in Savannah, and almost 10 degree improvement over towards Sterling. And these temperatures are going to be astronomical tomorrow afternoon when we check in on them because highs tomorrow are actually slated to be in the low to mid 50s. So that's going to be quite a nice change. For now, though, we'll deal with the brief hints of sunshine we get through this afternoon. A current temp of 39 in the QC, 41 in Muscatine, 38 down in Burlington, and 40 in Macomb, 36 up towards Dubuque. But as mentioned before, our skies clear out tonight and our temps kind of take a little bit of a nosedive here from the upper 30s down into the lower 20s, possibly some teens north of the Quad Cities as well by midnight at 27 with mostly clear skies, 26 degrees at 6 a.m. And as we hit tomorrow's forecast, I know it seems cold to start off tomorrow morning, but a southerly wind and lots of sunshine going to warm us all the way to the low to mid 50s. And then we could possibly see that again in the middle of next week and trying to put some 60s on the forecast in the extended outlook, but you're going to have to wait till 5 to see if I actually happen. You're you're trying. You're attempting to you know, go to 60. I, I, can't throw, I can't just throw them in there because, you know, you then know. the credibility thing. But I want to because it's getting close. The credibility thing? It's gone. kind of important in this business. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> Especially if you run out and get the Jamesons. Right? Yeah, that's right. All right. Thank you, Greg. Right, no now it is time for dessert or a nightcap or whatever you want to call Irish coffee. The real deal, except for the Irish whiskey, next from Chef Monica. When we come right back. Bryant here with your first alert weather 24-7 forecast. And we're looking for clearing sky conditions today as high pressure builds into the upper Midwest. So while we will still see a few scattered clouds out there through lunchtime today, looking for sunshine by this afternoon and temperatures actually getting into the 40s across the region. Clear skies tonight with lows in the 20s, and then a nice warm up ahead for the end of the work week. For today, we'll see a reading of 37 degrees by noon, mostly cloudy skies there, partly cloudy cloudy conditions by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, highs near the 40 degree mark, and then mostly clear skies by 6 o'clock this evening, temperatures reaching 36 degrees. Your seven-day outlook calling for temperatures in the 50s for Friday under partly cloudy skies. Looking for the cool air to move back into place for the weekend, temperatures in the... I know you're thinking what's so hard about Irish coffee. It's coffee and Bailey's, right? Boom, you're done. Well, not exactly so, says Monica, who is here to show us authentic Irish coffee and not using Baileys. Not using Baileys. Nothing wrong with Baileys is, you know, over some ice, but in this particular case, I don't want the extra sugar and the extra other ingredients in there. I want the pure whiskey. And it might not be Jameson, but Jim is short for James. Okay. So there, you're right. Is, I'm yes. using reverse logic here for you. And but <laughs> we're going to start even more basic with green beer. Which is totally not Irish, but it's a classic tradition. It Everybody's got to have have green beer, um, they would probably be much more interested in a nice Guinness. But we're going to do this real quick here. Look at the size of this stein. It's as big as my head. I know. We happen to have that in the prop closet. Great. I don't know why. And I didn't own one, so that worked out perfectly. Now, don't go overboard with the green dye. It's one drop. And I'm going to do my darndest there. I know. Your husband, Jeff, just one remember, drop. remember, it's just one drop. And then we should give that a nice quick stir here. We'll give that we a should, stir. Because we got to see it turn green. Look at Wait, ready? Here Jeff, we go. it takes more than one dot. No, look at no, it. Oh, there it is. You're right. Okay. Beautiful. All right, just hand me that. There you go. Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm really gonna, not going to drink this. I'm going to boost poor Paul up here. Okay, right. so Irish coffee. Mm -hmm. So you want some good, strong coffee to start with. So I brought mm -hmm. some with me from home here. We're going to do about 
oh, halfway or so up, maybe just a little smidge more. And then, got to add the whiskey. And this is kind of to your liking. If you like it stronger, add a little bit more. If you don't want it quite as strong, cut a little bit back. Basically, is it one shot? It's about one shot, which right. about about two tablespoons, two to three tablespoons or so would do you. Okay. Three on the, uh, that was probably a little more than that. Woohoo! We're going to okay. make this one strong. A little bit of sugar in there. Just some, you need the good granulated sugar, finely granulated sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, probably roughly about a tablespoon or so. Now, and this is the pretty part. This is the fun part. Now, you don't want to use whipped cream because that's too heavy. You want to use whipping cream that you've lightly whipped. So you I did used a real, I mean, you brought, real heavy you whipping brought in cream. your heavy whipping cream. Brought the heavy whipping cream. Gave it and a And then whip. I whisked it by hand until it got nice and thick. I don't know if you could see that. But it's just, it's almost the texture of like melted ice cream. All right. A little there bit. There you go. So, so not as thick as like a Cool Whip, right? Right. It's like more liquidy. And you'll see as, as Monica puts as it in there. As I add that in there. I'm going to no. try and be fancy and pour it on top here. Okay. But it's just rich and thick, and you see how it just stays on top? It's funny, it looks like Guinness, right? It does a look like bit, a beer, right? but it's oh so surprising. Isn't that beautiful? Now, here's the thing. That granulated sugar that you put in is already, is still at the bottom. Right. Which we didn't mix up, and you said we're supposed to drink this through a straw. Through a straw, so that you're sucking up some of the sugar along with the coffee, along with the whiskey. It kind of has, like, multi-layers there, so. Isn't that gorgeous? Or you can just stir it up and have so, at it. Yeah, go ahead and stir it, and there then we then we'll show how, see, oh, that's just a gorgeous thing, isn't it? It almost so, looks like a so it's, you like it because it's um it's not as sweet. Something like Bailey's is very sweet. Yeah, and I personally like it, to me it's really heavy and it makes my stomach upset if I've had that after a big meal. If I were to eat the Irish stew, which mm -hmm. you're going to do or corned beef and cabbage, you don't want something that's that heavy sitting in your stomach afterwards. So So here's what we have. We have the, the green beer which already has lost its Oh, but it's still a lovely color and, there. And and the the Irish coffee Absolutely. And the authentic Irish stew and the lovely bread that you served with it. We have the recipe online for the Irish stew, and you got the recipes for these, right? I mean, I do you remember the recipe for this beer? <laughs> one drop and drop of one little drop one little of drop. green food coloring. Make sure you put it in on the top and mix it in, and not on the bottom, because it'll just stay on the bottom that way. Will it? Yeah. Okay. So. Well. Um, so you're, you're not serving any of this at the inn, are you? No, we won't have, be having our St. Patty's Day this year. We'll be, unfortunately, unavailable. You're going to take a vacation, but you've been working hard at hy -Vee. Yes. And I mean, you have another, when's your next class coming up? Um, our next class actually will be in April, but next Monday I will be making the Irish stew, and people can come in and purchase it already ready to go. Good. And then that way they have it already made for, for uh, St. Patrick's Day. At the Bettendorf. At the Bettendorf hy -Vee. on Devil's Glen Road. So if you Love want it. Irish stew and you don't want to have to make it because you don't have time, this will actually taste better a couple days later That's because great. reheated leftover stew is just awesome. Thank you, Monica. You're welcome. You did a welcome. great job even though you're not Irish. I know. I'll you pretend. You did awesome. You really did. That was really fun. I do my accent. For you. I know. Her little brogue. When we come back, it's the only interstate St. Patrick's parade in the country, and it is right here in the QCA. All about the parade and how you can help this year. Next on PSL. For tonight, with lows dropping back into the 20s, and by tomorrow morning, we'll start off with some sunshine, a few scattered clouds out there, and warmer temperatures expected with southerly winds moving at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Readings getting back into the 50s. A high of 40 degrees for this afternoon. Looking for clear sky conditions this evening. Temperatures down near 32 degrees by 10 o'clock tonight. Here's your seven-day outlook with temperatures in the 50s on Friday, back into the 40s by Saturday and Sunday. Welcome to the Maya Miguel Challenge. Meet Maya and the gang. Oh, hi, I'm Maya. Maya and her friends want you to get up and play because it's always...